Welcome to our ongoing series of videos on loss force structure from chapter 2, section previous the direct formula w a to p s w line to its own banding member p is the the distributed load associated floor decking that's supported by a banding member s space that that mean members represents the width strip booking that's supported by a banding member um this video is with exact calculations uh, it's also available in def because it's more convenient for applicants talk about story belt it has a um, floor that's long gray and a elevated as a uh, concrete gilling decking the flooring plan second and for both picked and flowing diagram, uh, we have a series of joists, which are across here sometimes, as been before called. Second beams are the primary strip under the deck of and font, the secondary, but the being fairly common and all. Uh, these right here are called primary beam, also girder, would be under girder, would be interior girder, and then another girder. And beams by are special because they support just floor, wall, and back for this beam, not one, this one, primary, maybe the one. So, uh, let me talk side joists. Middle member from there and from there to the east being special case. Probably can't into more about the holes. Yeah. Uh, all of the simply the perimeter girders are uh, all substantial load. We're going to count the load perimeters uh, that come floor understand that's not a complete decision of what the particulars are going to support. Okay, we've reduced the plan. Let's go second by this particular example. Each round represents a column. So we have areas of the columns that we call the structural or column. Uh, and this the space between the column uh, is 30 in every one of the order. The 30 long and the 30 long. And you'll notice floor and run the all the way along. Where do we run lines all the way from the joints all the girder? That would be converted to connections at these points. A clip action or thing that's like a pin joint rather than a joint. Uh, we can call those all the way all of them indicate what joint between them and the um, And times also just for it says put C for connect. But right just doing simple numbers. I've now used this on some. And here I've started to show it so far. The roof dead area to load where P dead is 20 square feet and the roof is found to set. And we'll talk a little about um, P roof I've mean in section. I'll tell you, you have time for snow and you have time for the load of wood on the roof doing its roads. In North Carolina, the snow is 15 square feet. The flat is 20 square feet. And, and so the largest two numbers. The area to load floor um, P dead equals 50 pounds per square foot. And P5 equals 1 ounce per square foot. We're going to talk beam fluent area. We have some beams that should be waste. We've got girders and have barrier girders. Uh, in particular, we've got spaces. So, in every case, since distance of feet, we've got six. This is between this is five. Joist ports lay to the joist. On each side, another one. This is putting a swap floor that feet will be the length least. When we come to a girder, there's no load of side that supports halfway over to the side, so the floor support is 50 feet. In the case, the interior is putting half over to the necker here and way over to the girder. So, the total width of the being stood by uh, the floor roof uh, area girder is 30 wide. This one is 30 across. So for the space S5 perimeter girder is 50 feet and for interior 30 feet. Now we're going to relate to dead or a floor waste. Um, this is 5. We said do a piece or P is the dead load floor and previous uh, and we said the load of the floor is going to be 50 pounds per foot and said the sing is 5 feet of the joy. Put 5 and we multiply that out 205 pounds per foot and convert this point to kip foot. And so I have to take a look while I'm correct here. Okay, I think we're running again. So I've converted that to kips per foot. And the reason I did that, by the way, is that uh, at certain points, you're always going to be asked in specific units. For example, in all the example software that I know, they only input loads in kips per foot. So if you calculate this as 265 pounds per foot, and then you put the load into your software program as 265, it will take that as 265 kips per foot and you'll be horrified when you see what it does to your structure because you are actually inputting loads that are a thousand times larger than what you intended. So one of the things you need to do after you calculate these numbers is look at the units and make sure you absolutely know that you have them in the correct units that you want them in. 
uh, units, uh, we've said this before, are unbelievably important. A lot of people will just sit there and calculate numbers and go glibly along, uh, utterly oblivious to the fact that they're off by a factor of a thousand because they haven't even made the effort to track their units. Okay, so W live on the floor joist. So again, we we're talking about this joist here is P live for the floor times S for the joist. We've said the live load uh, P live for the floor is 100 pounds per square foot. Again, the spacing is five feet. That comes out to 500 pounds per foot because this foot cancels one of those or 0 0.500 kips per foot. And then if we want to know the total factored load, which is what we have to design for, and we have to design it to support that total factored load, we're going to take 1.2 times this number, which is W dead for the floor joist, plus 1.6 times this live load. Remember that we put a bigger factor on the live load because we consider that our knowledge of it is less certain and we want to be more conservative. Whereas for the dead load, we're pretty sure we're in the ballpark. And so we put a smaller load factor, which yields a lower safety factor, but we're okay with that because we're pretty confident of what we do uh, in the calculations of the dead load. So when we multiply all this together, we get a total factored load on the floor joist of 1.118 kips per foot. Now we're going to go um, perform that calculation for the um, perimeter girder for the floor. So this is W dead for the floor perimeter girder. Again, it's P dead for the floor times. And now I got another mistake here because I need the spacing for the perimeter girder. So we're going to take an Okay. So W dead for the floor perimeter girder is P dead for the floor times the spacing for the floor perimeter girder. Again, the dead load for the floor we've said was 53 pounds per square foot. Uh, the spacing for the floor perimeter girder is this dimension right here, which is 15 feet. So we put 15 feet there and we multiply them out and we get 795 pounds per foot and we shift the decimal over three places to convert that to kips per foot. So it's 0.795. Uh, likewise, W live for the floor perimeter girder will be P live for the floor times the spacing for the floor perimeter girder, which will be 100 pounds per square foot, which is a live load, times the spacing for the perimeter girder, which is this 15 feet. So we put that in there and we multiply 15 times 100, we got 1,500 pounds per foot or 1.5 kips per foot. The total factored load for the floor perimeter girder is going to be the uh, load factor for the dead load, which is 1.2 times the dead load, which is 0.795 kips per foot plus the load factor for the live load times the live load, which in this case is 1,500 kips per foot. And when we run all those numbers out, we get 3.354 kips per foot as the total factored load along that perimeter girder and that perimeter girder and so forth. And again, I remind you, these are just the floor contributions and there'll be some weight of that wall, which also ends up being supported on that perimeter girder. So finally, we're going to take an interior girder and we're going to take another break. Cause... All right, so W dead for the floor interior girder is P dead for the floor times S floor interior girder. The floor in interior girder has a swash of floor uh, 30 feet wide that is supporting and the dead load for the floor was 53 pounds per square foot. So when we multiply those two together, we get 1,590 pounds per foot or 1.59 kips per foot. Likewise, W live for the floor interior girder is P live for the floor times this spacing 
for the floor interior, interior girder. P Live was specified to be 100 pounds per square foot. This spacing is 30 feet. When you multiply 30 times 100, we get 3,000 or 3.0 kips per foot. And now when we want to get the total factored load on the floor interior girder, we multiply the load factor for the dead load, which is 1.2, times the dead load, which is 1.59 kips per foot. Then we add the load factor for the live load, which is 1.6, times the live load, which is 3 kips per foot. And when we run all these numbers out, we get 6.7 kips per foot. So that ends our example of uh, calculations, W equals PS. We only did the floor, but the calculations for the roof are identical, and the students are encouraged to perform those calculations as an exercise to convince yourself that you know what's going on.